Sing it up. Claps this back. Try not to trip around up in here. This is the studio. My whole spot is made up of boxes. Everything's made of cardboard. My most played song. I played that song 828 times. That's ridiculous. The song itself is seven minutes and three seconds. What's up, homie? It's your boy in Bark Life. I'm finna take y'all on a little studio tour. It'll be both productive and might bring some very useful context to what I got going on out here. Please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Jordan, and uh, my friends call me Jordan, but I call myself in Barclay. I just finished up one year on YouTube after losing my dream job last year, February 2019. I'm out, dude. This is on Wednesday. I'm about to rebuild everything right now. You have seven days off. Oh yeah, I'm actually, I don't have seven days off. I am seven days on. I mean, yeah. It's been pretty crazy, pretty crazy and depressing, but I finally just started being thankful again. Kind of excited to show you what I gotta be thankful for. At this time, I only have 35 subscribers. There's a big chance that none of y'all know who I am and y'all don't know what I do. What is you doing? I draw pictures for a living. I stay ready, committed, all out graphic design. I'm a graphic designer, by the way. The studio is a mess right now, so it's time to mise en place this situation. Yeah, we finna take a look, and I'm gonna show you what it is and what it means to me. This is my arts and crafts table. At any point in time, I got multiple different arts and crafts projects that come through here on this table. This is my notebook. I write everything down. I'm using a whiteboard marker right now. I like the way it feels. That's a holster. You know what that is. That's my coaster. I got holsters and coasters. That's actually a floppy disk. Nerd! Skateboards laying around. Got little painters. Dummy rounds. You know, you gotta get that dry practice on. I don't always use dummy rounds though. Ever since I caught the website, I just seen Embark Life as my working portfolio. Something I've been building up since I was 15 years old. The power of giving your work a name. You begin to look at everything you're doing with a lens of longevity. It's like growing a tree. It's like planting plants. It's like growing a garden. It's like planting a garden. It's like gardening. Super glues and epoxies. Got my Milano case. We got all types of supplies in here. Paper supplies, arts and crafts, sewing supplies, big hole punch, mechanical hole punch, Exacto 24, the red handle. Got punching awls. I got Captain Hook. Captain Hook. Here are my cutters. I got a Japanese perforator. Right here's my SE. I got all types of different scissors. I use magnets. Everything I do is I use hella magnets everywhere that I can. For most of my childhood, I had people telling me, you know, I should stop doing something. But drawing pictures is just something that no one ever told me to stop doing. You just really try to make your parents proud. If you were a useless child, it makes it really hard. That's just what it is to me. There's a lot of things that I was told not to do, but what I'm doing right now, it just grew and grew because no one told me to stop doing it. Yeah, I just do a bunch of arts and crafts. I got my cricket. I was given a pretty large, sizable signage painting job. I had to paint six large panels, pieces of signage for a uh, pop-up restaurant event. I never had a cutter before. I was one on one. This was an opportunity to where one would definitely be shining. Otherwise, I always normally be cutting all my stencil work by hand, but this would have been a nightmare and it would have been terrible for everybody if I did it by hand. I copped a machine. The machine is like 400 and some dollars and I made like nearly three G's off the job. So it was worth it. You know, you're committed to something difficult because you see the value in it and you really care about the product and who is gonna go to, eventually the job is so big that you're like, all right, I'm gonna cop me a robot, 
I've been locked up in here for a year by myself, just trying to figure out how to own my own operations, just in time for the world to start spiraling. I'm trying to get good at doing mini docs, editorials, you know, I love it. I'm gonna call these the intermissions, kind of in between right now. Finished up the first year of experiments at understanding the editing techniques and principles of design and how they apply to the sequences of events. Coming from art school, hella tables everywhere. Empty table space, so I'm all about it. When I did all my projects at home, you end up doing things on the floor, plywood, and other rigid surfaces on your bed. In design school, and even, you know, some arts and crafts that I would slang on my own, some part of the process was having those things like out on the fire escape. When you start owning up to your work and people see that you really feel in yourself, they're gonna give you the opportunities to really prove it. There's another thing to be not very good at it. You okay at it, but you really trying. You trying to go far. The person who puts in time is going to ensure more of his predictability if he has more data to work off of rather than someone who has luck. Whatever luck is, man. Got some moleskin books. Got these Magpul deck of pouches. You know what it is. You put anything you want up in there. Make you feel hella good. When people ask me what I do for a living. I'm sometimes tempted to just tell them that I, I'm unemployed. I kind of am though. I pretty much just try to snap my fingers and make a product and then flip a buck off of it. We slang it. Design is primarily involved with deletion, deconstruction, at some point, like straight up destruction. Whatever system you're working with, you strip out all the things that aren't needed, aren't necessary until you have the designed composition. The first thing is gathering all the elements. I imagine like a sculptor who has to find the right size stone. Imagine what he will be taking away from that stone to create the sculpture. Adding things basically to get a full and accurate reading of what you're working with, the one large stone. And then you take away things from it. At some point, you're gonna be on the other side of the curve and what you've done was you've you've wrecked it you've destroyed the design when you're really trying to chase making a product and be accountable for the execution i'm gonna figure out how much actual real estate this little project is going to take and i'm gonna try and get it all done on a tabletop you know i'm gonna try and get it all done on top of a dresser i'm gonna try and get it all done on a guitar case screens all i do is think about printmaking we got a blank screen full stack amp dot screen I got sample cards. I had a homie who was making me my screens. I wanted to know the tolerances of everything he got going on, so I just made this little sample card gang up. I used to print my own notebook covers. These are supposed to look like uh, composition books. I am an amalgam of many endeavors. There's a lot that I commit to. My driving force is visualization. I think that's why I went into graphic design. I'm a very visual person. I didn't learn how to read till very late, but. I learned how to draw. That's pretty much how I piece together the world, you know, being able to draw it out. If I could draw it in a diagram, if I could make sense of it with labels, make sense of it in an isometric manner, I could see the gears working. Everything I've been doing that I've been able to turn into a job, turn into a product, they all started with either skateboarding, drawing pictures, playing music, just all around arts and crafts. I don't know how many origami books I went through when I was a kid. It's origami, it's the sushi of paper. When you own up all your work, all of a sudden, you find yourself going pro. It takes a long time, but you finna get there, homie. If you never put the pen down, if you don't put the code down, eventually you're just gonna get paid to do it. That's it's crazy. What's on the docket today, man? We're sitting on the dock of the bay, man. Launch a website on Squarespace 7.1. No more 7.0. I don't floss with that. No, I like I like Squarespace 7.0. There's things that I want my thing to do. I had to put all these codes in and make it do what I want. And I'm not exactly sure how I feel about it, but I actually love it. I know what I feel about it. I actually love it. Got my Quasar light right here. This is my key light. So anytime y'all be seeing a key light that I'm using on subjects or things. That's This is the light that I'm running. It's the science tube. It's all about the science tube. I 
got my hunters on. Hunters. I got that toe crease outfit of the day. Key light. Let's get zoom in. This is my new printer. I just copped this one. Every graphic designer needs printing capabilities. I know we trying to go to a paperless world. I believe in it, but you want beautiful printing on paper sometimes. We do it. This is my first updated Epson since the printer I originally copped to get me through design school. That was a 1400, the um, R1400 Epson. I actually ran the entire life pace of that printer. I copped it in 2007 and it made it all the way to 2020. That's hella years. This one is the XP XP 15,000. Wait, is that correct? Hey. Whoa, man, it's 15,000. I don't, I don't know what that means really. Expression Photo HD. This one is a six cartridge inkjet printer. I think it also go up to 13 by 19. I gotta check. Don't, don't quote me on that one. I primarily do my printing at tabloid size. My goal is to work with individual business owners, like people like myself who need the skills that I have. I want all my homies to be hella happy and I just want all my homies to be hella successful. I've always just try to build my focus around being useful to people. I have a lot of memories of growing up being very useless. I ain't trying to be useless, I'm trying to be very useful. This is where I spend most of my time. Command center, this is the editing desk. I don't know. I do everything here though. Arts and crafts table, drum set, the guitar rack, the skateboard. I'm about to set this one up. We got Ace Trucks 44 is about to slap on these right here. 2020. Anti-hero. Deluxe. Double C Weed Deluxe. Penny Nickel Glow in the Dark. This is one for my baby child. Painted this one two years ago. Zip Zinger. This one I'm gonna set up with some uh, any 149s, man. Got another Zip Zinger. Chocolate. This is a Kenny Anderson one. I had this one back in uh, back in high school. When I got my dream job at the office, my boss had this up on his wall. And then when I was on my way out, he was like, you want the board? And I was like, I will take the board. Skateboards, everybody talk about a creative process, right? So it's just a part of the creative process. All the things that I personally am capable of translating. Everything is about translation when you're talking about communication design, graphic design, the user interface and the user experience. These are all just words, you know, these are just vocabularies. My laptop, 2019, MacBook Pro, favorite MIDI launcher, this is the Akai. Let's zoom in a little bit on this right here. When I first learned about MIDI, my mind's still being blown right now. Yeah, but I want them to go really fast. Get them all equally spaced again. Okay, select them all. Command C, put the playhead in between the first and the second one. And then Command V. What do you mean? Paste those four again, but offset in the middle. Oh. Boom. Now it's double time. See, it's all math. Music's all math. Say you wanted that. Exactly. Right? <laughs> My work and my skill set was basically internal advertisements for heads of marketing to go up to their big bosses and secure bigger budgets. 20 second, 30 second, very focused, very emotional, very storytelling. There's some esoteric qualities that go along with it, but when it's paired with branding elements, magic tricks, man. It's all about magic tricks. Go to market strategy, media ideation, overall branding systems. I helped develop branding guidelines, product categories for existing brands to go to market either in a new industry, reintroduce a product that has been updated, a product launch, all the fancy things that create a brand that have to reconcile the brand and the brand behavior. Ultimately, brands are about behaviors. Where those behaviors lead, it's the various ways that that brand markets itself. Brands commit acts of marketing. 
That's the basis of all the magic tricks. A 2017 iMac with the old monitors right here because the resolution is so tiny, they act like a magnifying glass for your for your crazy monitor. So like anything you drag onto this screen, like audio editing software, if you're editing videos, animations, when you're doing a lot of web work, like lines of code, you can throw it in your other display and it'll be magnified. All of these things out there are more tangible and they're more physical exercises that you can learn a lot of principles from that directly tie into how you think about digital creation. Being able to use the Pathfinder tool in Illustrator. Are you punching out of a shape? Creating a new shape? Are you welding a shape together? Consolidating the math as a compound? Expanding it so the math can be manipulated? The constraints that you have in the physical world allow you to think of the, you know, the ethereal everything is possible, being able to animate things, bring things to life in print, bring things to life in three dimensions, packaging design, front panel, back panel, top panel, how many sizes does this actually have? Is this a hexagon box? Applying the lessons that you learn from those, being able to understand what a multiply is doing in Photoshop, understand what a screen is doing in a Photoshop. I use Photoshop. Graphic design is visual problem solving. There's something that has has to look a certain way in order to work and perform a certain way. Page numbers, we'll get down to why maps work. Vector and texture. Once you locate one pinpoint on the map, the entire map restructures itself to position that one point, that one vector as the priority. There exists the vector, the single point, and there exists the texture that all other single points create. When you zoom in and zoom out, it's the same idea, same idea. Zooming in, you know, we zooming in and we zooming out. It's the, it's the same idea. If you're looking at a building, now you'd be like, oh, what streets lead up to this building? You'd be like, oh, it, it is this far from this other building. It is this far from my house. Comment below what you might want to see some future focused episodes on. I do a lot of things, but pretty much all of it is pertained to creative thought, graphic design. I have a lot to say about my personal creative process. Those metronomes on my YouTube. Cause I was like, I need to be able to like have no excuse. You yeah, know? but usually dude, it's just loose. I got the metronome on my phone. I just started doing that. I hate slaving myself to the f like, Dude, it's important. I know it's important, dude. I know. Think about how <laughs> many times you've approached a ledge thinking about the timing. Yeah. Coming from art school and working at a agency, I definitely use cameras like a lot. I went to school to, to use cameras. I've owned cameras. Most of my focus was photography and most of my photography was strictly utilitarian. Useful sushi grade to be brought into the computer. You know, levels. It's just shooting for levels. I've never had to think about cameras in this way. Like YouTube is probably one of the hardest things in terms of understanding myself. It's crazy. It's called YouTube. Like that's insane. It has more shape because you're seeing that light. Oh yeah. It's called far side key shooting into the dark side. Your main sources are sculpting you from behind the line that you're standing at, forcing the light to wrap yeah. around something before it's perceived. This is my Hackintosh. Here's a little flash animation that I coded. This is a flash script and it just runs randomly forever. There's nothing more inspirational to me than looking at just iterations of Matrix code. It's like, I don't think I ever really quite recovered from watching the Matrix. Just... Wake up, homie. Wake up. One of my favorite things in the world. Everything I know about computers from an early age, I learned from watching my pops build computers. The chamber in here. And they have these little baffles on, on both sides to call it just the back volume. So when air is being pushed back and forth, it's going to cause these to go in and, out and flex in and out. That's what creates the, the lower frequency. It has everything to do with available volume. So they'll measure from design the inside the volume, the air that, that has to be uh, contained. But then they just maximize it with something that expands and contracts. Yeah, so the material, the bladder, everything that's designed, like I can show you a picture of it. 
But that doesn't, that's not the design. The design is actually the science behind it. Kind of material they use, the thickness. I used to watch my brother like type in DOS commands to bring up Doom, Pinball. You gotta type in these magic codes, you know, and then uh, you can bring up a video game. Oh, sick. Desktop publishing is probably the only reason why I was able to witness and observe graphic design principles at play. You didn't need a printing press to print documents. Paper comes out and it's like, wait, you just printed pictures of my favorite Pokemon so I can put it on my binder? This really is an amazing world. I really do believe that at some point in my life we finna have flying cars. There's a dummy website built inside of a website different active states, responsiveness. I first started making websites in sixth grade. Yahoo GeoCities, y'all remember Yahoo GeoCities? Angel Fire. I had a homie who gave me a copy of Macromedia Flash 5. It's under Adobe now. I used to do all my animations in Flash and it would go directly to the internet because you can embed and everyone had a Flash player because everyone was on Newgrounds. Remember Newgrounds? Homestar Runner. And pretty much till this day, everything I do animation wise, I'm still thinking about the concepts and principles of animation that I learned through keyframes and flash. Action scripts, movie symbols, easy ease, got an easy ease. You have a consistency, you have a predictability. Oh, when we hand Jordan some of these tools in a couple years, he already flipping a buck with it. It's basically how I see every one of my possessions. Like I don't babysit any of my possessions. I work them hard, but it's because I'm trying to juice it and make every moment of it like worth it, worth it for everybody. I am very fortunate. I'm extremely fortunate. I basically live my creative life in terms of gains, just palm slap to palm slap. If you put it into work, a more powerful person is gonna line you up. Everything that has led me to owning my own operations, being a husband and being a father, it's pretty much given to me. It's not about luck, it's about proving yourself. I have failed a lot of times. I still fail now. I'm actually failing right now. But we finna see what happens. I made my way through design school. I basically got offered a job on my portfolio showing. Palm slaps are things you can't ask for. You, you, don't, you wouldn't even know what to ask for. They just get given to you because of the work that you're doing most honestly. Like there's a lot of people who try to lie to get their gain. And I've definitely done that. I've committed bank fraud before. It is what it is. I was tempted by a hundred dollars, man. Got these tiny books. They smell like mothballs. From when my grandmama was uh, trying to learn English when she come to America right here. Got an old book from a long time ago. 1854. So this is 1854 right here. One of my favorite albums of all time of uh, my generation. Some Seek Forgiveness. Good one, man. Fat books. You know, that's a fat book. There's no more headband on there. It's supposed to be a headband on there, but there ain't no headband on there. Headband, bro. I firmly believe that if you commit to something difficult, you do it based on the truth. You know, you gotta earn it once, but once you earn it once for real, then you you earn it for all time. This is my rack on wheels, this is my roller rack. I got different art supplies up in here. I do my own wallpaper, cause I try to stay fancy. We got this M Audio, M Track, the two. That's what I be using to um, attach my guitar to GarageBand. basis of how graphic design has served humanity, how we're able to look at things and make sense of it. You start playing with optical illusions, how the eye works, how the brain works. We're able to see faces in inanimate objects. Graphic design plays on all of those areas, the psychology of the visual. For the past year, I had a lot of homies coming through. I've been teaching a lot of music. I had homies coming through to teach me about music, to bring in gear. I had homies coming through teaching me about drones. I'm not really prepared for any anything in particular. I just stay ready to commit all out graphic design. I'm not doing anything super special. I'm trying to be honest, I'm trying to help all the homies out and inspire. One of my main things that I've always tried to get my homies to understand about what I be doing is that I've always had 31 year old me 
in mind when I started this out. I never thought it would be under these circumstances. Oh, was that hell loud for you in the headphones? No. Okay. When I got my first job, I was still drawing everything with a mouse. All my bosses and the senior designer, they all use Wacom tablets. I go out to lunch one day, I come back, and my mouse is gone, and there's a Wacom tablet there. Zero words were exchanged. They obviously know know what's up and, and what to expect. There's things you can do with a Wacom tablet that you can't do with a mouse or a trackpad. There's things you can do with a mouse that you can't do with the other two. All my editors understand. I was allowed to shoot a wedding. I also did all the graphic design elements and the signage and the decorations and the tabletops and the collaterals. It was in Hawaii. It was amazing. By now I have done a handful of diaper cakes. If you don't know what a diaper cake is, I'll show you. They get pretty elaborate. I visited a brewery that my homie work at. He taught me about beer. I don't drink alcohol, but I, I think it's fascinating. Went on a couple shooting trips with one of my homies. We've been playing around with guns. Pretty sick, man. I'm pretty much crushed by the weight of like, who am I, you know? I'm just gonna show you how I make things, how I make, how I make products, make myself useful. I'm just trying to be useful. Water wear away the stone. I thrashed up in here for a year. I've been able to carve out what I think is a fairly operational space. It took me about a year to completely build something that would reconcile all the things that I do. To fully understand myself, to grow as a person, as a husband, as a father. Wow. Do it on the paper. Pink. The paper's on the wall. It's the best of both worlds. These are wedding invitations. These are the um, the RSVPs. I'm thinking of uh, binding these in a little book, like a little scrapbook. If you're designing wedding invitations that have sent back RSVPs, make sure you state on the RSVP who that RSVP is for. That's just something that happened to us. I learned how to draw to be able to teach me about things that I, I couldn't read about it until I learned how to read. That's essentially how early man developed writing systems. Over generations and you pass down your learnings, you have to start archiving things and you have to start proving, you know, ownership of ideas. Graphic design, it just happens. Underneath the far side of this uh, table, I have the parking spot for Ronin Gimbal. This is what I use when I gotta be floaty. Floaty and ethereal, but not everything's a dream. Not everything's a dream, so I don't use it all the time. When you get older and you like try to organize things. It's amazing when you just look at like a bag or a box and you're like, that's a nice box. box. One of my favorite things is to print skateboards. I like the squareness. I think if I go back to riding bowls, I might see what's up. But this was cool. This was a school, pro this is a school project I did. It's called the Bandsaw Club. You know what it is. So I got to, um, play around with some printing techniques and I got this to, oh, 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 Gangnam Style. I got it to wrap around. I don't remember who I saw do that first, but I, I seen someone do that first. I don't know how they did it. All I know is how I did it and that's, it's exciting to me. Graphic design in its practice is a observation and a phenomena, not necessarily like an invention. Just as solid a phenomena as the air we breathe, as gravity, as, magnetism, there's some science going on. And then at least the engineering, and then at least the design. That's where we're at, graphic design. Medicine jar, guitar related things. If I'm not playing my own guitar picks, this is the guitar pick that I would prefer. Two millimeter purple turtle. Stutter switch right here. JHS, I love when you get extra things with the things. This pedal basically just kill your signal in the middle of your signal. You know how Buckethead, Buckethead got that. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I don't know. This one really spoke to me because I, I stutter personally, so I have to match. Got my guitars. Chat man, ML1 Ash going on. Doo -doo. Got a little whammy. I'm still trying. I'm still trying to figure out my dive bombs. Dive bombs are never-ending journey. Sweeps and dive bombs.
Yamaha. It's my first real guitar, Yamaha. They call this one the APXT1. This is my stepping stone. What really got me interested in guitar, of course, is shredding. <laughs> You know, and then, and of course, this is gonna be the first guitar you get, but it's good. I'm thankful to God about that, because it uh, really tame you as a person when you have to understand a guitar that kind of sounds like a banjo. No! The white one is an Epiphone. I gotta restring this one, like, ASAP. <laughs> The last one's a Chinese telly. I gotta rewire this one, like, ASAP. I hope you've enjoyed our time here together. Allow me to do some show and tell. I'm just a graphic designer. These are all the things that I'm just thankful for. And I've just been doing these editorials kind of just to preserve them. YouTube has been more like seeing myself more accurately. Whoa, that's what I look like. That's what I talk like. That's what I sound like. That's what my music sound like. These are my editing choices. Here's where I got all my tripods. I put my microphone stands. Light stands. You know, the one that everybody have. It's good, man. This is a drum set. Oh, what? Oh, man, I be whacking things. How has that not happened yet? Already? I'm not really a drummer. I just happen to own a drum set. Uh, one of my boys. His dad helped me get this one. Some dude at this church was uh, trying to give it to the church, and they was like, "Yo, we already got a drum set." So they was like, "Oh, let's just give it to let's just give it to Jordan." And I was like, "Get that!" Now I have one. It might look like I got hella fancy gear. It might look like this is all purposed, but these are just tools from childhood all the way through all the way through now I've just been blessed with the ability to uh, hold on to a lot of the things most of the things that I'm committed to I've at some point in my past or even currently in my present operation been able to flip a buck or two simply for being able to think correctly and having a skill set that can reconcile the science and the engineering all the way through design and execution might look like I'm stacked with the gear but it's just because I've been painting a picture with color for a long time. I draw pictures for a living, and I built this brand for you, uh, Embark Life. <laughs>